So come now and bait my heart. This life is yours. Come fill me up, Holy Ghost. Shine bright until the whole world knows your love. Your love. Come set me on a holy fire. Thank you. 
through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. It restores my soul. Restores my soul. Mercy and goodness. Mercy.
Good morning and welcome to Progressive Faith Church. My name is Pastor Anthony. I'd like to welcome you to our broadcast. If you're joining us on YouTube, if you haven't done it yet, like and subscribe. So anytime that we go live or we have any um, encouraging words or the word is being ministered, you will always be alerted. Also, if you're over on Facebook, go ahead and subscribe there so you can also get alerted and then follow us on Instagram, the gram. Please go over there. All of our messages are there also. So if you have a preference, you know, your Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or our, our website, which is soon coming. So please, um, let's stay um, abreast of those um, different mediums and you can always get the word. You can go back and listen to all of the, the messages and our Theology Thursday, which takes place every Thursday midweek at 6 p.m. on Facebook. Well, Today is the 4th of July, um, so hopefully you're getting the word and then you're going to do some fireworks and barbecue later on, but you can watch this from wherever you are, so thank you for tuning in even on a holiday. Listen, the word of God doesn't stop because of a, a holiday, but we definitely want to get the word out on today and then we're going to go celebrate. Father God, we thank you for everyone that's tuning in over the summer, even during the times when people don't normally tune in to church and the, the, the numbers go down, but we thank you for those that are faithful, Father God, to get the word, to those that are faithful to study daily and pray and do those things that they need to do to fortify themselves in the word. We say thank you, we say bless them, we say keep them and strengthen them and send what is needed their way exactly when it's needed. We thank you right now on today, Father God, that you make the book speak. Minister to us in a way that only you can. I pray that I decrease and you increase and I thank you for this in your son Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, well, we have a good word for you on today. Um, we're going to be coming out of Genesis, the book of the beginnings. Amen. And we're going to be talking about today. I already am. Um, when we get into this, it'll kind of help you understand and to see that we've been doing a lot of unnecessary things as it relates to who we are and what God has called us to do and be. You know, God already made us everything that we're going to be. And, and so this is what we're going to be dealing with today. This is the fall of man and, and how the Satan came, how Satan came in to tempt them and telling them, you could do this, you could do this, you could be that. No. But as we get in and look at this, you'll see that they were already everything that they were going to be. Um, this is the NIV version, Genesis 3, and we're going to start right at verse 1. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden. I'm going to say that again, in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse four. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. We're going to stop there for a few moments. I already am is what we're talking about today. I already am. We see here that he goes quickly against what God had said. And he tells them, well, you know, no, 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 you're not going to die, but your eyes are going to be open. You know, you, you're not going to get in trouble. You know, you know, if you, if you just, you know, just snort it just a couple of lines, you know, you, we're not really going to go to jail if we steal the cars and run down I-4, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, no, 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 that's that's not how it's going to go. You know, your eyes are going to be, you know, we're just going to have some fun, you know, uh, um, and we've been doing things, guys, brothers, sisters, whoever is watching, you know, um, We've been doing a lot of unnecessary work trying to be and fit in places that God has not told us to be. The cliques, the clubs, the fraternities, the sororities. I mean, you have to ask yourself today, did God really tell me to do that? Or was it the soulish man? Was it the devil telling you, you know, you can be, you can be, you can be, but you already are. 
We are three-part beings, spirit, soul, and body. Today, if we take a good look, we will see that the body is fat from fleshly things, but the word, the spirit is fighting to stay in step with the purpose that God has called us to. Genesis 3 and 4, we see as the text unfolds, the, the woman is, is quoting what Eve is quoting, what God has said, and then the enemy comes back and says something totally different. Um, and one of the first things I want to point out is you can't be possessed, you can't be possessed, but oppressed. The serpent was after the image of God. And that's the thing that I want to deal with the most in this message on today, the image of God. See, when we think about the enemy, when he, when he um, was cast down from heaven, he, he was um, an angel and he came down and, and he, he's coming, he's crafty and he's cunning and he's coming to deceive. He was after the image. The devil does not love you. He's trying to defile the very image of God. You must understand, even if you're, you're cracked out and killing and you're a felon and you're not fulfilling purpose, if you're doing things that are not commonly to God and you're doing all of these different things, you're still created in the image of God. It's the very image of God that he's coming to get. Genesis 1 and 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Because he was kicked out of heaven because of pride, he's using reverse psychology for all who want and seek to be Christ-like. Adam didn't act as a leader, but he followed, and the worst happened. Leaders must always lead. See, as this was unfolding, Eve is standing here having a conversation with the enemy and Adam is standing right there and he says nothing. The Bible tells us that he stood right there and he said not a word. Adam didn't act as a leader. As leaders, we must lead. He stood by, he said nothing. God is not obligated to reschedule with us. We must understand that when God has put us on a mission, when God has told us to do something, when God has given directives, he's not obligated to reschedule with us when we fall short and we are afraid to do our call. You have to know that you are obligated to obey and the call of God and psychological warfare is started in the Bible. See, this was the enemy playing on the people's minds, telling them, he says that when you do this, you will be like God. When you do this, they were already like God. They were created in his image. He'd already given them dominion. He told them to name all of the, the different animals in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, um, in Genesis. They were already like God, but he was messing with their mind. He was telling them, well, you know, do this and do that. No, that's not what he had called them to do. But he says, you will certainly die. And the serpent said to the woman, this is in verse four, Genesis three. He says, for God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. And then verse six, it says, when the women saw, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for, uh, for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took and ate it. She also gave it to her husband who was with her and he ate. See, see, Adam was right there, but it was after the enemy kept coming to her and kept telling her, you know, this is good. No, don't worry about what God said. No, you're going to be like God. You know, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to have wisdom. You're going to have this. You're going to have that. And, and then it says after that, their eyes did come open and they understood that they were naked and they began to understand all these different things that were happening. When you go to verse 11, God asked them, he said, who told you? See, we've got to begin today to um, unfold and discover even with us being all that we're going to be, all that God has told us to be has already been put inside of us before the foundations of the earth. You know, he says, who told you that you were not? See, it's a trick of the enemy. It's a play. It's psychological warfare. He wants to get in your mind and, and, and discourage you and tell you what you can't do and, 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 and get you to be depressed and all of these different feelings and emotions that are, that are, that are there floating around in, 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 in your body and, and, and make you think that you cannot do what he's called you to do. 
The enemy is after your mind. But in Philippians 2 and 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. See, if we have the mind of Christ, he says that he would give us perfect peace. Mark 12 and 30, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So he's telling us right now, listen, we need to fortify our mind because the enemy is going to come and he's going to try and mess with you. All these scriptures deal with the mind. See, he says, if you can get your mind right, if you can get your thinking right. See, a lot of times the reasons we're not successful and the reasons we can't fully grasp and understand that God has already made us the head and not the tail. He's already made us that businessman, that pastor, that teacher, that leader, the, 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 the congressman, the lawyer, the RN, whatever you want to be, it's already done. But you've got to understand in your mind that greater is he and that the greater one lives in you. And so you have to understand that you have to understand that God is not playing tricks. He's not playing mind games on you. But he says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. He wants you to be steadfast, unmovable. He wants you to do exactly what he's called you to do. And see, we can't listen to the enemy saying we're going to be. And that's why I said the name of the sermon, I already am. You know, so then I myself in my mind, and, um, Romans, excuse me, Romans 7 and 25, it says, thanks be to God who delivers me through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in myself sinful nature a slave to the law of sin see it all happens in our mind so as a man think it so is he you know if, if, if you keep saying man I'm, I'm not feeling good I'm not feeling good then that you won't be feeling good if you keep saying man ain't nothing happening with this business you know I've been trying I've been trying I've been trying but it's nothing happened won't anything happen but when you change your mind and understand that God's got you that from the beginning and the foundations of the earth he says I know the thoughts I have for you Jeremiah 29 he said thoughts are good he said he says to bring you to an expected end see in the theater of human history it's already all played out you know it's already played out he knows who will be faithful he knows who won't show up he knows who will get it done he knows who's going to skip out halfway through and so God chose you he activated you as I told you last week and now he's letting you know not only have I activated you you're already great you're already spectacular in your own right to accomplish and do what I've called you to do and that's what he was trying to get Adam and Eve to see but Adam fell and 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 and, and Eve was right Eve fell and Adam was right there by her took the fruit and didn't say anything so y'all, we, we can't be like that today. We saw how that ended for everybody. It put us in an area where we had to work and now we understand lack and all of this stuff because of the fall in the garden. Verse six says, she also gave some to her husband. She was talking about the fruit and we always say it's an apple. It, the Bible doesn't say if it was an apple or orange or peach, nectarine, whatever. It just says, the, it says not to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden, lest you surely die. And it says their eyes were open. Yeah, their eyes were open. Now they're seeing things that they shouldn't see. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you experience it, you can't unexperience it, you know. And so, y'all, we have to let the devil know that I'm already successful. I'm already saved. I'm already smart. I'm already talented. I'm already getting this book published. I'm already a businessman, a woman. I'm already spirit filled. I'm already going to do what the word of God has told me to do. I'm already leading. I'm already promoting and excelling. I'm already hired. And even though it hasn't manifested yet, sometimes you got to stand and say exactly what the word says. You know, I'm already proud of my children, even though some of times they might be failing, might be on drugs, might be in jail. I'm still proud. I'm, you know, I'm already running for the office. You know, you're thinking about running for mayor or president or this office or that office. You already are stepping into it. I'm already setting the goals to get someone saved this week. I'm already looking for opportunities to be a better person. I'm already, I already am because of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It might take some time, but y'all, it might take a little time for you to understand. But listen, when, when you get it, you got it. See, sometimes we we have to we have to go through some things and we and, and we fall. And, and Donnie McClurk has said we fall down, but we get up. But see, when I get it, I got it. You know, when I understand that God's got me, you don't have to keep telling me I got it. You know, I understand that he's going to make a way. I understand that I'm everything that he's called me to be. 
And so as we look at this text and we get ready to close this out today, everything that God has told you that you can do, it's already in you. Don't let nobody trick you and don't let nobody tell you that you can't be successful. He says, I already did it in Jeremiah. He says, I'm, I'm giving you an expected end. So I'm already great. I'm already moving in my purpose. I'm already a, a multimillionaire. I'm already a, a publishing genius. I'm already creating the next social media. I'm already doing what he's called me to do. And so if you don't think of it like that, it will not manifest in your life. You've got to understand that God has already done it. He's not circling back around to you. But when he created you, everything that you were going to be, you are. It's in you. Greater is he is in you. You've got to understand that you've got to pull the greatness out. You've got to let it flow. You've got to let it go. And let people know when things begin to happen in your life. Hey, listen, I'm only here because of the goodness and the greatness of God. I'm only here because of the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm only here because he sanctified me and set me apart before the foundations of the earth. See, whom he called, he justified. So you're here with the purpose. You're here with the mission. You already are. You're already everything that you're ever going to be. So, Father God, we thank you today. Hallelujah for every person on this broadcast, for every person watching, for every person watching live, every person watching the, the rebroadcast. They're already successful. They're already healed. They're already hired. They already have strength coming to their body, Father God. They're already recovered from, from COVID-19. Hallelujah. It's a done deal on today. It's a done deal on today. So, Father God, we thank you. We're excited. We're excited because it's already done. Yes, yes. That son, that daughter is coming off of drugs, fentanyl, these pills, oxycodones. Hallelujah. That son, that, that the boy that wants to be a girl, the girl that wants to be a boy, it's already being reversed and turned back and set into motions with what he called us to do, with how he created us, man and, and, and woman, female and male. It, it, it's already done, Father God. We understand our purpose. We solidify the source of our power, which is you, and we understand that we can do nothing without you. And so today, the person that doesn't know you, the person that may be confused and, and is saying that I, 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 it just can't be, it already is. Hallelujah. You've activated us. You have called us and we are already everything that we will ever be. We just have to get in the word and and find our purpose and trust you. So, Lord, we thank you on today for this in your son, Jesus name. Amen. Listen, if you don't know the Lord on today and you've never been saved, I want to pray with you. And I also want you, if you're praying salvation or if you're getting saved, I want you to email us from the information on the bottom of the screen. I also want you to pick up that phone. You can call us. Our number is right there. We want to hear from you and we want to know that you've made a life changing decision on today. We want to know that you're now understanding that you're already everything that God has said and that a new day is starting for you from this point forward. Amen. We'll just repeat this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus dying on the cross. I believe that he died the third day in the morning. I believe that he rose with all power in his hands. And I believe because I'm confessing my sins on today that I'm repenting and turning from all of the things that are not like you that I am now saved and a part of the kingdom of God amen if you prayed that prayer you know the Bible tells us that we have to repent we have to turn you know it's not so much of just saying a prayer but we have to mean what we're praying we have to know what we're praying and we have to confess the things that we've done wrong I think we've gotten that part out of there we just want people to pray no but what, what are you what are you repenting and confessing from God wants to know that you're on on this new journey with him but he also wants to know that you're leaving the old stuff behind and sometimes I think Think that's why we can't get on to the old because we drag the get on to the new because we drag the old right there with us amen well please contact us and reach out to us um, this week or even right now you can call and we will pick up and answer and minister to you
where right now it's offering time. If you are partnered with us and we thank you for everyone that's been giving, we really appreciate it. Um, those that's been um, connecting with us with Cash App and Tidely and those that have been supporting us since we got going about three months ago, we are very appreciative and we say thank you. And anyone that's watching that would like to partner with us, you'd like to tithe and you're part of our online congregation, our online members, please do so. Um, all of the ways to give are there on the lower thirds. And we also have a link in the description box um, on Facebook and on YouTube. You can click right there and give right there through Tidely. Father God, we thank you for all of those that are giving today. We say bless them, we say strengthen them. We even pray for those, Father God, that don't have to give, that might be unemployed at this time, that might be struggling. Um, we pray right now, Father God, that you manifest your purpose and your abilities in their life. We pray right now, Father God, that virtue returns and everything that's needed to be successful returns to each and every individual so that they may fulfill their call and be able to support ministry in a way of excellence with their time, with their dollars. And we thank you for this right now in your son Jesus' name, amen. I want to share this with you because God just put on my heart about giving. But I remember when I was um, in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I was serving in the military and I was at Christ Cathedral. And I remember there were times I didn't have anything to give. But I remember my bishop said, man, you can give your time. And I would come out, I would play the drums, I would clean the buses, I would wash the vans. See, a lot of times we get hung up on what we don't have, but you have time, you can volunteer, you know, you can go to a, a senior's home, you can tithe your time. You know, so let's not get caught up and stuck in what we don't have, but give God what you have. Give God what you have, amen? And he will return back to you more than you could ever imagine in the way of blessings. You know, a lot of times it's not coming back as finances, but he's returning it in the way of health, the way of strength and keeping your mind solidified and solid. And you know, that virtual, that moral excellence, still being there at a, a, a old age. So amen. Well, that's the word for today. Thank you guys for tuning in, even on the 4th of July. Listen, if you're here and you're all the way at the end of the message, you stayed strong and you're courageous and you're hanging with us, go ahead and share this word to five people that you think will benefit from it. And I will see you on Theology Thursday, next Thursday at 6 p.m. and next Sunday at 1145. God bless you guys from Progressive Faith Church and me. Pastor Anthony. God bless you. Take care.